hello students in today's topic we will talk about the security issues in manet so because uh, in the manet the nodes are uh, uh, having a high mobility as well as uh, the nodes are freely moved to each uh, each other place as well as the manets the nodes in the manets can uh, use the connectivity from any network so the security of the manet is not so good so identifying and fixing the problem is too good when compared to the traditional network so if there is a problem occurs in the managed environment so identification and detection of this problem as well as how to fix this problem this is the biggest challenge in the managed environment in the traditional network all of the protocols that follows having a fixed infrastructure because the managed does not contain any infrastructure so the detection of the problem is very uh, uh, having a high issue in this case having a large issue in this case so due to the dynamic topology the several security attack can be in physical years itself and intruder can cause so intruder is a attacker here so the first can be because we are talking about the physical year so first attack can be possible over the jamming means the jamming of the signals so the signals is used to carry the data and when there is a lot of overhead in the network so the jamming can be there and the overloading so overloading and the jamming uh, sometimes uh, it is uh, similar to each other so overloading means if my buffer size is full and uh, we are trying to move out so many packets at a time and buffer boost situation occurs then it is called the overloading so jamming is basically the uh, path between the sender and receiver the routing path between the sender and receiver will get jammed and the overloading means like uh, at the particular node the buffer is overflowed in this case the path is not full but the buffer storage will getting uh, full in this case so what is parallelizing so parallelizing is also connected with the jamming and overloading so when the jamming is occur and the overloading is also occur in the network system so the particular mobile node will assume as a parallelized entity like the parallelized means parallelized entity having a life having a feeling as well as all of the activities uh, he and she can does but it cannot uh, uh, in order to cope up and run its environment it has to depend on some another things and another person so just like in the paralyzing paralyze the network so, so the node cannot do such active things such kind of active things uh, independent of itself it may cause a breakdown of the network so like the security issues like jamming overloading and paralyzing it will break down the network and the performance of the network will get decreased very drastically now the attacker can modify the address of the packet as you can see in the dsr protocol lot of packets has to be transmitted over the medium and uh, uh, the sender node or an intermediate node has to append its identifier at the root request and the root reply packet so in this case if there is an attacker present in the medium then attacker can modify the address of the packet and modify the track backing path as well as the forwarding path so this is one of the example the intruder may inject fake informations while routing the packets like uh, the first thing is uh, if we modify the path in the dsdv routing table or the number of hope counts it will updated by the attacker incorrect routing table updates then it leads to misrouting of information sometimes it will be forwarded to some malicious activity malicious uh, uh, user sorry so sometimes it is forwarded to once the malicious user so in this case uh, my sensitive information will be sent towards uh, a particular unauthorized entity and this information may be leaked if the certain encryption procedure is not used by the sender the characteristic of the ad hoc network itself with the way to the attackers like uh, manet itself creates environment for a lot of the security measures the first one is called the lack of physical boundary there is no firewall there is no physical firewall exists firewall is used to monitor the incoming and outgoing packet if there is a malicious uh, type of uh, website or malicious type of path is there then firewall is used to, to stop the uh, entering the packets inside the network as well as the outside in the network so firewall is just like uh, a door system in our home environment so there is a lack of physical boundary that's why the manet is prone to uh, one of the security attacks low power rf transmission low power rf transmission means in order to communicate in the manet uh, environment we have to use a radio frequency so if i want to maintain a connectivity which my neighboring node with the using of mobile hotspot so by using certain uh, signal processing techniques uh, the attacker can mitigate the low power uh, attacker can minimize the 
frequency transmission radio frequency transmission over the medium such that the particular sender will not uh, access the required uh, amount of bandwidth in order to transmit the data like the uh, there is a in this case there is a Daniel of service attack because uh, the tower uh, which is provided me the radio frequency channels are full of use and full of capacity but by using some malicious activities it is minimized and the limited co uh, limited uh, computational capability security implementation may cause need of computation for the encryption and the decryption that is not suitable for the mobile nodes limited computational capabilities means because in order to run the encryption and decryption algorithm like the cryptographic algorithm there's a lot of computation have to be performed like the security of the key you have to be maintained and your algorithm must be hard in nature so because the managed environment the nodes having the limited computation capability as well as a low battery backup that's why these cryptographic hard algorithm like the SHA 512 or the RSA and the distal signature is not well suited up and the limited power supply limited power supply is one of the drawback because uh, we know that a particular mobile nodes having a battery backup which is very minimized in nature which is very less in nature so after the power is uh, exhausted then the attacker can uh, uh, initiate a certain packet by uh, stealing the identity of a particular node that if a particular node sleeps then the malicious node will uh, act as a that particular node and exist in the network then characteristics of secure ad hoc network so when we call our mobile ad hoc network is secure if they are these measures so these measures are just like the cryptographic algorithms as we uh, studied in the cryptographic algorithms class so first one is the availability availability means service should be available to all of the users so there should be no denial of service attack exist in the medium confidentiality if a sender wants to send a particular information towards the receiver then this information must be captured and read by the receiver only so confidentiality must be maintained between the two entities integrity this integrity means uh, when the particular message is uh, forwarded towards the sender to the receiver so message should not be modified by any entity or not be tampered by any entity in the medium then the authentication authentication means sender has to first authenticate the receiver that i am sending the packet towards the authenticate entity and also the receiver has to sure that the particular packet is sent by the authorized entity only so non repetition non repetition means it should ensure that a node having sent a message cannot deny it because non repetition is the case if sender sending a message towards the receiver and the receiver receives it but after receiving the sender will deny that i uh, did not send any message so this type of activity it will not be there in order to be make ad hoc network to be secure then what type of attacks are possible in the ad hoc networks so there are two types of attacks the first one is a passive attacks and the second one is the active attacks so these type of attack are already know but for the information i am elaborate one by one so passive attacks are that attack in which the attacker only sits and monitor the uh, monitor the data exchange between the sender and the receiver so the attacker motive is not to disturb the operations ongoing operations in the network it just has to monitor the packets and ongoing activities so the first one is called the snooping attack so in this snooping in snooping attack there is a attacker in the medium so this attacker has to listen the traffic that is traversed between the two machines in the network like the source and the destination if the traffic means a message is transmitted from the source to the destination is unencrypted like it is not secure then it can be accessed by the particular entity like the unencrypted password or the unauthorized individual entities or any confidential data so it does not disturb the activity that is uh, has to be occurred between the sender and the receiver but because of the less security measures just like the confidentiality techniques are not applied the mediator attacker can uh, fetch the information now the second attack is called eavesdropping so eavesdropping is just like the snooping attack in the medium in the eavesdropping attacker has to uh, sit in the medium and the transmitted packet has to be captured between the sender and the receiver just the theft of information and if the information is not encrypted then it can uh, use the sensitive information it can uh, theft the sensitive information which is transmitted between the sender and the receiver the third one is called a traffic analysis so traffic analysis in order to judge that which entity is establishing the communication to 
uh, that entity so the two persons are involved in the communication and attacker wants to uh, access the data or uh, it tries to find that which entity talk to which entity then the traffic analysis is done by the passive uh, passive attacker and another one is called the monitoring so just like traffic analysis another point is called the monitoring so monitoring is means if i want to if i am uh, act as a detective and i want to judge that uh, which entity is talking to which entity and how many times it has to talk how many times it sent a message and what type of message is sent like a large message a large message or a small message so monitoring at the traffic analysis will be comes under the category of passive attacks now the second one is called the active attacks in the active attacks it is just opposite of the passive attack in the passive attack the attacker only sits and has to monitor uh, the network and the ongoing information but in the case of active attack attacker has to do passively but uh, it will uh, the main motive of the attacker is to disturb the network at well as well as it can uh, theft the information that is transmitted between the sender and receiver and it can utilize that message in order to harm the sender or the receiver as well as it can uh, disturb the normal functionality of the network so one type of attack of the active attack is wormhole attack so the wormhole attack is uh, with one type of active attacks in the mobile adopt network in which the malicious node the malicious node just uh, uh, traversing the packet to the another location and uh, traversing the packet to the another location and that location it is the hub of malicious node so that is com- called the wormhole attack so the just like wormhole attack is uh, like your uh, worms in your instant time so what your instant time do if you eat any food your instant time uh, task is to digest your food and is to convert into the blood and the energy but in the case if there is a worm uh, is present in your uh, instant time then what happens it will not convert into the direct energy or it will not convert into the blood but certain times of uh, misdirection has to be produced and you do, do you cannot cope up that amount of energy that you always expected from your food so this type of thing is uh, occurred in the network also so the wormhole is one the nodes which actually uh, modifies the routing information and uh, tunnel the packet towards the malicious node then the second one is called the black hole attack in the black hole the hole attack is just like the denial of service attack in the denial of service attack what it does it has to interrupt all of the services it, it has uh, suspend all of the services that the sender will initiate so if the particular services is available but because of the denial of service the bandwidth is not utilized by the sender node and uh, gray hole so in the gray hole attack it is not like the black hole or the worm hole but the gray uh, gray hole attack is the one in which the node acting as a uh, serious users in the network communication but actually they are malicious so just like uh, it will act as a detective like uh, it pretend that it is uh, in the favor of uh, routing in inpo- uh, routing uh, in the favor of uh, the transmission of a routing information from the center of the receiver and intermediate node acts as a true intermediate node but actually they are not they are the malicious user so when the packet is coming from the sender to this intermediate node which is acting like a serious and the true uh, users of the network they will drop all of the packets as well as capturing all of the packets or can tunnel the packets toward another direction so that is called the gray hole attack now the resource consumption resource consumption is just like the black hole so resource consumption it can utilize all of the resources like it can uh, uh, draw the attack over the base station mobile station or the buffer attack resource consumption also as well as the bandwidth consumption so all of the thing related to the resource are comes under the category of resource consumption active attack then the routing attack so in the routing attack the main basic concentrate of the concentration of the attacker is to attack on the routing tables so routing information like in the dsr the path has to be the caching root caching has to be poisoned as well as in the dsdv protocol the routing table the whole count will get modified as well as the sequence number will get modified and update the uh, false table towards all of the nodes in the network so like this kind of uh, attack can be possible over the ad hoc networks 
so this is the categorization of the attacks according to the layer so the first one is called the application layer so in the application layer the common example of the application layer attack is when i want to download any file so after downloading successfully when i want to run that file if i want to open that file that file is corrupted or uh, like uh, someone is sending me a word file and it is actually the true file it is not uh, the bad file it is true file but after download after downloading at my pc when i open this doc file it will be uh, contains uh, some it will contain any uh, symbols like it is not provide the useful information that the doc file actually contains so that types of corruption and the reputation is comes under the category of application layer attack now the transport layer attack so transport layer attack is just like the hijacking or the flooding sync flooding attack because the tcp ip uses the sin mechanism in order to communicate so the sin flooding attack will be uh, captured by the transport layer as well as the session hijacking so session will be created just like if we try to log in in the sbi uh, net banking so after the logging a session will be created so attacker will uh, actually have this uh, session and uh, fetch all of the information like in the facebook when i log in in the facebook the session is not created but if i want to chat to some another user like my friend then a session will be created so that uh, hijacking of the session attacker can uh, simply city simply in the simply manner can uh, have the chat that what chat is going on between the two users now the third one is called the network attack in the network attack the common attacks are bomb hole attack black hole attack and the fabrication attack so the fabric uh, fabrication attack is just like the uh, routing attack data link clear resource consumption as i told you resource in the form of like the channel access mechanism like the channel is available but uh, the malicious user do some restrictions over the channel and that channel cannot be utilized by the another road so resource consumption or the bandwidth consumption type of uh, attacks is comes under the category of data link layer then the physical layer in the physical layer traffic analysis monitoring and the jamming signals and the interruption and the eavesdropping are comes under the category of physical layer now the multi layer there are some attacks that are uh, combined with so many layers like the multi layer attack denial of service the denial of service attack with the data link layer as well as we can see in the network layer also and impersonation impersonation will be act as a network layer because in the ip address if the ip address will get uh, modified then it will be used to making the communication network layer data link layer and the physical layer and the replay attack the replay attack can be performed over the network layer as well as the transport layer then attack on the ad hoc networks so this type of things is already explained by me so i am not explaining again security attack counter measures so what type of solutions can be proposed in order to mitigate this attack so in the data link layer one uh, methodology that is called the spread spectrum transmission and the directional antenna can be proposed so in the directional antenna this uh, radio frequency channel that is transmitted by the base station in order to uh, give the bandwidth to the user such that they can make a transmission will get be encrypted in a medium like in the creation of the mobile hotspot we are termed uh, we are secured by using the wan password wpn password so by using this uh, uh, password wps password we actually secure our uh, range of my system in the mobile hotspot by using the spread spectrum transmission now the network layer in the network layer we can counter measure this type of attack by using the key management protocol because a key is used in order to provide the security between the entities involved in the communication so trusted security trusted devices just like uh, you can use the kdc as well as the nsd protocol nsp protocol and the kerbos protocol can be utilized in the network layer in order to share the keys and the transport layer so in the transport layer what is the functionality of the transport layer the functionality of the transport layer is to provide and secure the end to end communication so if we talk about the end to end communication we have to utilize the cryptographic features like if the sender wants to send a message it has to encrypt at the one point and at the receiver side that is the another point has to decrypt with message with a key so key sharing will be secured by the network layer and the encryption and the decryption procedure has to be followed by the point to point 
means transport layer protocol so we have to utilize the data encryption uh, standard techniques now the application layer in the application layer when i want to prevent our application to be eavesdrop or is to be modified by a certain entity then we have to use some antiviruses in our system then vecular ad hoc network so what is the managed basically the vecular ad hoc network is a special kind of the managed these are also called the mobile ad hoc network but in the case of mobile nodes these entities are involved it will be act as a vendor like the vecular so vehicle system are connected with the network such that a one vehicle can communicate it to another vehicle so when it initially used by the police vehicles the fire and the ambulances also and nowadays there is a smart car launch in the a smart city so this is one of the example of the vanet in which the cars can communicate with the internet directly and send and transmit the data to any other nodes so in this network vehicles can communicate with other vehicles within the 100 to 300 meters and it is a multi hop network because if i want to transmit the data from one vehicle to another network then we have to use the routing protocols over there and uh, the city of highways network size may be kilometers wide because there is no rush so we can uh, use the kilometers wide also then important use of vanet drivers get get advantage warnings and information from nearby environment via the message exchanges these message exchanges in terms of the text messages so the driver sit on the one vehicle can communicate with the driver seated on the another vehicle and it can uh, uh travel some information like the road conditions in the forwarding uh, kilometers forwarding kilometers as well as if there is some accidents or some is happening happens or some emergency scenarios occur then this type of information can be sent by the first driver that is sitting on for the first vehicle to the another drivers involved in the highway then road accidents may trigger chain of events in the highway it helps to apply the emergency brake system to avoid further collision it give the geographical information to the drivers as i told you now this is smart card or launch in which the cars are directly communicated directly connected with the internet system so in the case of this internet system it can utilize some sensors also like the gps map and the display of the uh, back cam by using the back cameras as well as petrol filling station i can navigate by using the gps and the food malls also so this communication is happens by using the road side unit so by using the road side unit we can access the communication by using the base station like the vmx then driver can communicate with the mobile networks like the rsu and the vmx and enjoy the services like voip news highlights video conferencing and the entertainment so the communication in the vanet can be und- uh, can be understand by using this diagram so we can say they are inter vehicle communication so the inter vehicle communication is this vehicle is communicated to this vehicle and this vehicle is communicated to this vehicle now this is a accident happens over this this uh, car is actually facing uh, the bad position so we can say there is a accident happens so what Uh, happens in the vanet environment this uh, car will send information to this one this car will send information to this one this car will send information to this one like the same way it can uh, send the information towards all of the nodes in, within the range and all of the nodes can get to know about the emergency situation or the unexpected events occurring in the roads then the vehicle to road side communication in the vehicle to road side communication involve two entities the first one is the vehicle itself and the second one is the road side unit so this is road side unit will directly communicate with the base station in order to provide the connectivity with the internet uh, to the vehicle so this road side unit will used to provide the video conferencing youtube channels as well as certain uh, news channels also like the mobile data system and inter road side communication the red and side like the rsu in order to provide the connectivity of the mobile data to the vehicles rsu has to communicate with the internet so rsu will be act as a gateway or act as a mediator between uh, the vehicle as well as the base station now the vanet and the road accidents so in this case you can see there is a rsu here there is another rsu and there is another rsu so in spite of the text messages that is happening between the vehicles rsu will forward this message to all of the vehicles involved in the communication 
so if there is an accident happens over there so what will do this card will generate a messages that is communicated to the wi-fi system by using the rsu technology that is called the roadside unit this rsu will broadcast or multicast this information all of the entities involved in the kilometer of range vehicles so now by using this information this entity this vehicle will get to know okay in the further road in the forwarding kilometer road this accident happens i have to change my track so after getting this information now it can change its track so this information is also received by this now it is changing its track now it, uh, it if he wants to go in this information sorry if uh, this card wants to go this direction but after receiving this information uh, it will uh, going towards this direction means lane change according to uh, when the message is received by this RSU about the accident so this is one of the advantage over the valid now the crowdsourcing because the security measure is also here in the banner just like in the manet because there is no fixed infrastructure so in this case what happens if there is a malicious user in the man medium and uh, the another nodes in this range will face this issue then there is a voting system so in the voting system what happens all the vehicles will start broadcasting the aggregation messages for evicting vehicle b so after collecting when there is a lot of broadcasting messages over there for the vehicle B that is the malicious user in the network this malicious user will be blacklisted automatically so this is the lactimate vehicle and uh, it makes a complaint uh, for uh, this vehicle and uh, it broadcasts this information to all of the networks all of the entities involved in the network and if this uh, phenomena is faced by all of the vehicles in the network then it will broadcast the eviction message for the vehicle b now the comparison between the manet and the vanet because the vanet is a subset of uh, manet so the first point is collection of mobile node that communicate with each other and it is without having any infrastructure but in the vanet there is a combination of infrastructure less as well as the infrastructure oriented so the vanet is bound to communicate to another in the manet environment if uh, a particular driver want to communicate with another driver then it can establish a dock manner otherwise uh, if uh, if the driver wants to communicate is or send or receive the packet by using the mobile ip to the via the internet or the wi-fi system it has to use the roadside unit so it is a infrastructure oriented as well as infrastructure less then the movement of the nodes in manet is more random node mobility is considered to the roadside topology because there is a high mobility because in the highway the vehicle speed is about 100 to 120 kilometers per hour na? so that's why so we can't expect fastest topology change but because the vehicle speed is too high there is a frequent topology change in the terms of vanet environment power is major constraint in the manet but in the vehicle there is a battery backup inside so this battery having a battery backup of about uh, one year or i think four to eight months so this is not the so many power constant over the vanet environment and another one is moving speed does not consider the manet design but here is the moving speed of the node has designed effect of the manet because in this diagram you can see if this vehicle wants to transmit the data to this vehicle and suddenly if this vehicle speed is so getting higher than the packet transmitted from this vehicle to towards this vehicle may get dropped in the middle so that's why so this is all about the manet and the vanet i hope you will understand it very clearly so thank you